Today's lesson is about how believers should look forward to a time of joyful, eternal life and make the most of every witnessing opportunity because time is limited. In chapter 60 and 66, Isaiah addresses his message to the people living in exile, assuring them that they still had a future. Isaiah sees a blessed future for the nation of Israel. The Apostle Paul would later add to this prophecy by revealing the mystery of God's will to unite Jew and Gentile into one body with Christ as the head. And that brings us to our key verse for today, which reads, Look, I am creating new heavens and a new earth, and no one will even think about the old ones anymore. Be glad, rejoice forever in my creation. And look, I will create Jerusalem as a place of happiness. Her people will be a source of joy. Isaiah chapter 65 verses 17 and 18. As this text begins, we must note the primary character, God, <laughs> hence the phrase, I create. The phrase is a recollection that exceeds Isaiah's prophecies in uh, chapter 40 and 48. The world itself will be completely transformed in the new age that God brings. Paradise Lost will become Paradise Regained when God completes his restorative work and transforms creation and his people. Isaiah gives a tremendous pictorial view of the new heavens and new earth that are eternal, safe, peaceful, and abundant with all the good things God has created. A new relationship with God and Jerusalem will be established where God will rejoice over his city and people. The time for mourning will come to an end. Verse 19 is connected to Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 through 10, where the eschatological, that is, the ultimate or end times picture of a messianic banquet is described. God's people will have no need or fear of sadness, as God will make all things new for his people. Again, the prophetic picture is also clearly seen in Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 through 5, where God will reign as the light of New Jerusalem, and the leaves of the tree of life shall be for the healing of all peoples. Eternal prosperity is also promised for the righteous. They shall enjoy the fruit of their own labor. Contrast this verse with God's judgment on Adam's disobedience. Also, these verses correspond to God's promise to Jerusalem, that they shall gather their produce and enjoy it as they praise the Lord in the courts of his holiness. The new millennium will bring forth from God blessing, not judgment, and will be dramatically different than the judgment spoken by the prophetic oracles in the past. The promise from God is encompassing. Not only will God's people enjoy the fruit of their work, but also that for which they labored shall bring forth a harvest. Here the prophet describes an era of peace and harmony for the people with their creator. The silence of God in the past shall be broken. God seems to indicate that before the people pay attention or give heed to him, he will already have paid attention to those he loves. The prophet envisions a renewal where peace shall dwell both among humans and creatures. No human or animal will kill for food. Thus, Jerusalem shall be a city of peace where all will reside in harmony just as God declared before the fall of humanity. So here's our lesson. Do you believe that the conditions of our world will get better or worse? No matter your particular perspective on this question, God's call and promise of a glorious new creation remains. As believers wait patiently for God to usher in the new age, we share the good news of Christ with others, reach out to the needy, and obey God's word. We should live each day making the most of every opportunity to do all of those things. Thank you so much for listening and subscribing to iLights. Heavenly Father, fill our hearts with what we truly desire, for who we truly seek is you.